This is the second video from our series, Unveiling the Darkness, Jack the Ripper. Please do subscribe, like, and share to help us grow our channel thread tonic. In the dimly lit alleyways of Victorian London, a series of brutal murders unfolded, leaving the city gripped in terror. Each victim, a tragic figure caught in the merciless web of poverty and despair, met their end at the hands of a shadowy figure known only as Jack the Ripper. Marianne Nichols, known as Polly, was the first to fall victim to the Ripper on August 31, 1888. Born into hardship, Polly's life was a testament to the unforgiving nature of Victorian society. Destitute and desperate, she sought refuge in the Doss houses of Whitechapel, her spirit worn thin by the relentless struggle for survival. Her lifeless body was discovered in Buck's Row, her throat slashed with savage brutality, marking the beginning of the Ripper's reign of terror. Annie Chapman met a similar fate just a week later, on September 8, 1888. Her life had been marred by hardship and adversity, shattered dreams lingering in the background of her daily fight for survival. Her mutilated body was found in Hanbury Street, a grim indicator of the danger lurking in the shadows. Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were murdered on the same night, September 30, 1888, a gruesome double event that heightened the public's fear and fascination. Stride's body was discovered in Dutfield's yard, her throat cut, but with fewer mutilations than the previous victims. Eddowes was found in Mitre Square, savagely mutilated, in a manner that suggested a deepening malice or frenzy from the assailant. The last canonical victim, Mary Jane Kelly, was murdered on November 9, 1888. Her case was particularly horrifying. Her body was found in her room at Miller's Court, mutilated beyond recognition, a grim tableau that marked a horrifying climax to the sequence of killings. While the canonical five victims are most closely associated with Jack the Ripper, other murders around the same time have occasionally been linked to the same killer. Emma Elizabeth Smith and Martha Tabram were earlier victims, though their connections to the Ripper are debated due to differences in the manner of their deaths. Smith was attacked and robbed, dying later from her injuries while Tabram was stabbed 39 times, differing from the Ripper's typical modus operandi. Rose Milet, found strangled in Poplar in December 1888, and Alice Mackenzie, murdered in July 1889, are sometimes considered part of the extended list of victims. However, the lack of definitive Ripper characteristics in these murders leaves their inclusion uncertain. The reign of terror brought by Jack the Ripper plunged Whitechapel into a state of fear. The mysterious and elusive nature of the Ripper, coupled with the brutality of the murders, overwhelmed the capabilities of the existing police force, leading to a public outcry over the inefficacies of the law enforcement of the time. Vigilante groups formed, and people lived under the constant shadow of a threat that seemed to strike arbitrarily and without warning. The legacy of Jack the Ripper extends far beyond the immediate horror of his crimes. He became a symbol of the ultimate boogeyman, his name synonymous with evil, and his identity still shrouded in mystery over a century later. The Ripper's story has influenced countless books, films, and series, becoming a central figure in the genre of true crime. His impact on public consciousness and the fields of forensic science and criminal profiling are profound continuing to provoke both fear and fascination worldwide. More importantly, the Ripper murders highlighted the grim realities of life for the impoverished in Victorian London, where the socioeconomic conditions made women particularly vulnerable to such attacks. It spurred changes in policing and public awareness, though the safety and social reforms that would truly protect such vulnerable populations were still many years away. While the true identity of Jack the Ripper may never be known, the stories of his victims and the terror he instilled remain a dark testament to the fragility and inherent danger of life in the shadows of society. The echo of his knife is a chilling reminder of the depth of human depravity and the enduring mystery of evil.